from the St. Francis Yacht Club in San Francisco, this is the Wednesday Yachting Luncheon, hosted by Ron Young. Welcome to the Wednesday Yachting Luncheon. Nice, nice to have you here. It's always fun to look out these windows at places uh, other yacht clubs we go to, we don't always get such a beautiful view of the water. It's wonderful to have such a view here. I'd like to welcome our staff commodore, Bruce Monroe. Bruce, nice to have you here. Also, our sort of a resident a historian of San Francisco, who's been writing for the Chronicle only since 1961. Carl Nolte is here. Carl? I didn't say 1861. I said 1961, just to be clear about that. And because our guest today speaks uh, Japanese, is the Council General of Japan, we also invited a buddy of mine who has a master's in Japanese from Stanford to talk to our guest, Fritz Maytag. Welcome, Fritz. <laughs> and since China is no longer the biggest country in population on Earth, Aditya Padala is here representing India. Aditya. <laughs> they, just ex they just ascended to that new role. So... Many of us who have paid attention to the Navy for the last decades recognize that the Seventh Fleet, often described as the biggest fleet on Earth, is spending a lot of time in uh, the North uh, Western Pacific, right around Japan and uh, North Korea and South Korea, and there's good reason. America only represents 6% of the population of the world, but we sit atop a pyramid of alliance uh, uh, alliances of other countries that makes us far more influential than our population or even our GDP. It's often noted that we have the biggest GDP, uh, you know, gross domestic product in the world. Uh, U.S. is being 26 trillion of the 113 trillion for the whole world. China is 19 trillion, but third uh, is Germany and then Japan and J J Japan is catching up with Germany and looks like it will, on current trajectory, will exceed it to become uh, essentially the third biggest economic power in the world. So our pyramid of alliances uh, counts upon real powerful countries like Germany and in Europe, but there is no more powerful country than our neighbors in the Pacific, Japan. And uh, we learned a lesson in previous wars uh, that the Marshall Plan put to good use after World War II by making incredibly powerful partners out of our one-time adversaries. And we've learned a great deal intellectually and culturally and in every other way from our good friends in Germany and especially our good friends in Japan. My buddy Fritz sold his brewery Anchor Steam beer a while ago to a company, and then they sold it to another company that's Sapporo. So today, and I know that's one of Fritz's favorite beers, it's one of mine too, they were able to talk a little bit about beer as well today, demonstrating the cultural partnership and friendship and the value of same uh, between our two countries. So it's with great pleasure that I introduce our speaker today. Uh, please welcome to the stage of the Wednesday Yachting Luncheon. You're welcome. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. My name is Yasu Shinoguchi, uh, Consul General of Japan in San Francisco. And uh, thank you, Ron, for your kind invitation to this wonderful uh, San Francisco Yacht Club. Uh, today, unfortunately, it's cloudy and foggy, but uh, I'm, I'm I'm living in San Francisco, so I'm so accustomed to this <laughs> climate, so uh, no worries. Um, and also where uh, Ron touched upon uh, the Japan-U.S. relations, and uh, we have a very, very traditional relations between Japan and California, San Francisco. Actually, in 1860, in 1860, the first diplomatic, Japanese diplomatic mission ship arrived in San Francisco. That ship named uh, Kanrin Maru, and uh, so San Francisco was a kind of gateway for Japan to enter North America. And also, after the World War II, San Francisco was a venue for peace conference. And Japan was able to uh, sign the peace treaties with many countries. So it's a kind of, for Japan, to debut 
the New Japan debut uh, after the World War II. So San Francisco plays a very important role for Japan to enter the international society again. And also now, more and more Japanese companies are investing in California, particularly in Silicon Valley. And we are very proud that Japanese companies are the number one investor other than any country. So we are creating more than 110,000 jobs. And uh, this means that uh, how Japanese companies appreciate California's economy, California's potential of economic growth. And uh, today, uh, I'm very happy to uh, touch upon uh, the Japanese uh, foreign and security policy. And uh, uh, we have a kind of a vision of a free and open Indo-Pacific. And actually, uh, our approach is to uh, identify those two oceans, both Pacific Ocean and Indian Ocean as a whole. Uh, because, well, uh, the Pacific Ocean and the Indian Ocean, uh, those countries surrounding these oceans, uh, the population of these uh, oceans are more than half of the population. And also, Asian countries, as you all know, are achieving high economic growth. And also, uh, we pay attention to African countries which have a huge potential of economic growth. And we consider these two oceans, oceans as, a, as a whole. And uh, uh, between those oceans, ASEAN, Southeast Asian countries are located. Uh, and ASEAN countries are, are very important to connect those two oceans. So we have deep engagement with those ASEAN uh, countries. And the aim of this vision, free and open in the Pacific, is to uh, establish a free and open uh, international order based on the rule of law. Now, nowadays, uh, when we look at the world map, uh, well, you can see the photo of Ukraine. Uh, Russian aggression in Ukraine happened, started in February 2022. And so in the western part of uh, Eurasia continent, we are witnessing the Russian aggression in U Ukraine. It is a real challenge to the international orders. And uh, uh, it's a violation of the UN Charter. It's a violation of the uh, territorial integrity or a violation of the uh, uh, sovereignty. So uh, Japan is very remote from Ukraine, Europe, but uh, Japan considers this issue not only as a European security issue, but also a global issue. That is why Japan joins international sanctions against Russia, and we have a robust assistance to assistance to Ukraine, more than 7 billion US dollars. And uh, uh, because, well, if we allow this situation, uh, another uh, attempt to change the status quo by force could happen in anywhere in the world. So uh, we consider this issue as a very important security, global security issue. So uh, we would like to raise our voices to oppose any unilateral attempt to change the status quo by force. And in the eastern part of the Eurasian continent, uh, we are concerned about another unilateral attempt to change the status quo by force. And if you look at the map of South China Sea, uh, unfortunately, China uh, well, uh, is, is dominating or is controlling and is militarizing those disputed features uh, of the uh, South China Sea. And uh, actually, there was a, a 
uh, International Tribunal uh, Arbitration uh, ruling, which says that the Chinese uh, argument of uh, having these uh, waters, South China Sea water, territorial waters, is not uh, baseless, but uh, uh, unfortunately, ignoring this uh, ruling, uh, China uh, does not stop to control and militarize those disputed features in the South China Sea. So uh, we are always, we are also against this attempt to change the status quo by force. And so now, uh, please look at the uh, video. The Indo-Pacific comprises Asia's rapid growth, Africa's vast potential, and the Pacific and Indian Oceans. This region, home to half the world's population, is thriving. However, it also faces various threats, such as military invasion, piracy, terrorism, proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, infringement of human rights, and natural disasters. To ensure both regional and global peace and prosperity, building a free and open international order based on the rule of law is vitally important. Per this idea, Japan launched the Free and Open Indo-Pacific, or FOIP, in 2016, and continues to promote this vision today. FOIP is open to all countries that share the vision, and has already gained widespread acceptance and support worldwide, including ASEAN, the G7, the EU, the US, Australia, and India. Japan aims to develop a free and open Indo-Pacific in cooperation with those countries and regions through the following three pillars. First, the promotion and establishment of fundamental principles, such as the rule of law, freedom of navigation, and free trade. Second is the pursuit of economic prosperity. And third is a commitment to peace and stability. All countries and regions that share the vision are now cooperating in such areas as high quality infrastructure investment, maritime order, human resources development, and humanitarian assistance to realize a free and open Indo-Pacific. So, uh, as the video showed, uh, uh, the specific of free and open Indo-Pacific is composed of three pillars. First one is uh, to promote and establish the rule of law, freedom of navigation, free trade, etc. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, this is a very important component of free and open Indo-Pacific. Uh, uh, we would like to establish uh, the international orders based on the rule of law. And the second is uh, uh, pursuit of economic prosperity. In particular, we are providing assistance to connect uh, or, or to have more connectivity in the maritime route and land, uh, land uh, route as well. And the third uh, component is uh, commitment for peace and stability. And uh, particularly, we are very keen to maritime security and also humanitarian assistance and uh, human resources uh, development. And so well, now uh, I would like to show uh, how we are trying to support the connectivities of the Indo-Pacific. City Airport. This has created a barrier in the mobility of trade and also human resource development in the region. We have been receiving a lot of support from Japanese government, not just from the funding, but the whole project is a complete support from the design to the building and training. We have 
have significantly improved technology equipment systems such as a fuel hydrant system and the new baggage handling system. And also we have a central command center. From next year, we will carry out the second phase of Terminal 2, which will extend the capacity to 15 million passengers per year. Chính phủ Nhật Bản đã giúp Hải quan Việt Nam triển khai áp dụng cái hệ thống thông quan tự động có tên là Vinac Vesis. Thì sau khi đưa hệ thống này vào hoạt động, thì hệ thống cũng đã giúp chúng tôi giúp Hải quan Việt Nam rất nhiều trong việc cải thiện cái hoạt động thông quan hàng hóa. Connectivity is very important for the ASEAN region because it helps to narrow the development gap within the 10 ASEAN member states and even in a global context. Programs such as JSPP21, which is in its 21st year, provides an additional value for the region to get together and benefit from the experiences of Japan. This is a great opportunity learning from border control. We have to learn from gathering around and talk to each other. I would like to thank Japan-Singapore Partnership Program for giving us an opportunity to learn from other countries. Okay, so uh, as I worked for uh, two years at the Defense Ministry of Japan before coming here, uh, I would like to touch upon the recent development of the Japanese uh, security and uh, defense policy. And uh, looking at the East Asia, and Japan is surrounded by uh, uh, several challenges, security challenges, from China, from North Korea, and also from Russia. We are neighbor of Russia, and uh, uh, Last year, last December, uh, we announced a new national security strategy. And uh, uh, in this strategy, uh, we announced to enhance drastically the defense capabilities, including counter strike capability. Uh, through this process of drafting, shaping the new security strategy, uh, I would say that uh, uh, war in Ukra Ukraine. Uh, impacted a lot because uh, missile attack or missile threat is not a, a virtual threat but real threat. In the, on the TV, we we saw many many attacks from Russia, and that triggered uh, Japanese people's concern. And we thought that uh, 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 Russia. Uh, started to invade in Ukraine because Russia thought Ukraine's armed forces is not so strong. Actually, it was another case, but uh, if one country considers another country which is not strong militarily, which, which is uh, not strong militarily, uh, that country uh, could have a temptation to control militarily. So, uh, we, we do not uh, have war, but we would like to enhance our defense capabilities in order to deter other countries' invasion, other countries' attack. So enhancing deterrence is uh, very important to make sure our, our security. And uh, uh, so, well, uh, uh, counter -strike capa for counter-strike uh, capability, uh, we are in the process of purchasing uh, tomahawks as well uh, in order to have this uh, counter-strike capability. And uh, uh, actually, uh, we have uh, some uh, uh, missile defense capability, uh, and, uh, uh, but uh, missile uh, uh, defense capability uh, to shooting down the missiles coming from other countries, uh, this capability or this system uh, is not 100% sure for uh, protecting the Japanese sovereignty. So that's why uh, we are in the process of purchasing uh, uh, tomahawks and uh, uh, counter-strike capability. And in the new national security strategy, uh, uh, we have announced uh, 
GDP 2% target for defense spending in fiscal year 2027. So we are gradually uh, 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 increasing the defense spending and uh, hopefully in fiscal year 2027, uh, Japanese defense spending will be uh, GDP 2% level. And of course, uh, in order to implement a free and open in the Pacific vision, uh, U.S. is the most important partner. U.S. is the only allied country for Japan, and uh, we have a very strong and uh, cooperation, uh, defense cooperation between Japan and United uh, States, uh, because U U.S. and Japan share the common values, democracy, freedom of speech, freedom of navigation, rule of law, and uh, I'm very happy that Japan-U.S. relations, alliance, uh, is more important than ever before, and uh, we have a very good relations between Japan and United uh, uh, States. And also, uh, in order to have more uh, network or more cooperation among like-minded countries, uh, we launched uh, four countries' cooperation in order to achieve free and open the Pacific. Japan, US, Australia, and India, uh, named Quad. Uh, th these four countries are, are very, uh, have a strong economy and we also share the common values, and we are able to cooperate in many areas, such as quality infrastructure, maritime security, counterterrorism, cyber security, humanitarian assistance, disaster assistance, education, and human resource development. Uh, actually, it, these four countries' cooperation started in 2004. Probably you remember that uh, there was a big earthquake and tsunami in December 2004, over the coast of Sumatra Island in Indonesia, and Indonesia, Thailand, uh, Malaysia, those countries were severely affected uh, by the tsunami at that time, and those four countries, uh, armed forces, uh, cooperated each other in order to provide uh, humanitarian assistance to the countries affected by the earthquake and tsunami. And also we have some uh, 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 maritime exercises, such as Malabar exercises, uh, among four countries' navies. And when I was working in the Defense Ministry, uh, we were able to enhance uh, Japan, European countries' uh, defense cooperation in order to achieve free and open uh, Indo-Pacific. Uh, European countries also have the same uh, values with Japan, with U.S. And uh, uh, in 2021, uh, when I was working there, uh, we were able to enhance this uh, defense cooperation. It, it was not so easy because it was at the time the uh, 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 pandemic was uh, uh, still difficult for us, but uh, in overcoming this challenge of pandemic, uh, we were able to have uh, deepen our defense cooperation. Uh, I would like to touch upon United Kingdom. Uh, United King Kingdom, uh, two years ago, announced the new, uh, well, announced the integrated review of security, defense, development, and foreign policy. And w one of the important components of this in, uh, review was to tilt to Indo-Pacific. So UK announced more engagement, commitment uh, in the foreign and defense policy uh, in Indo-Pacific. And uh, you know, uh, UK left European Union several years ago. It was Brexit. And recently, UK joined CPTPP, Comprehensive and Progressive Trans-Pacific Partnership. This CPTPP is a very high standard free trade and investment uh, rules uh, agreement. And unfortunately, US left TPP 
uh, during the Trump administration, uh, Japan is hoping U.S. will be back to TPP, CPTPP, but uh, it's very symbolic that U.K. joined CPTPP uh, because CPTPP is open not only to Pacific countries but also to other country, uh, countries of other regions. So uh, U.K. is now more and more Indo-Pacific state. And uh, in September 21, uh, UK carrier strike group, CSG-21, uh, was deployed in Japan or Indo-Pacific, and uh, Japan accommodated uh, aircraft carrier Queen Elizabeth uh, in Japan, and we conducted several uh, joint exercises. So uh, uh, Queen Elizabeth uh, made a port call at Yokosuka, and also, uh, I would like to touch upon France. Actually, France has many territories and islands in Indo-Pacific. So they are very keen to the security, particularly maritime security of Indo-Pacific. And France announced uh, Indo-Pacific strategy. And uh, in 2021, uh, also, uh, we conducted several uh, joint exercises with France or among Japan, France, and United States. And also, among European countries, I would like to highlight Germany. Germany has a similar history with Japan because, uh, because of the experience of World War II. Germany is not very active uh, in terms of de deploying the armed forces outside of Germany. But uh, Germany also announced uh, policy guidelines for the Indo-Pacific. And when I was in defense ministry, uh, Germany dispatched or uh, deployed uh, frigate Bayern in, in Japan. And uh, uh, in this way, uh, we, we are engaging uh, European countries because they share the common values and uh, they are able to cooperate with Japan, US, other countries in order to have a, a stable, peaceful uh, Indo-Pacific. Because uh, Indo-Pacific region is a very important op opportunity for economic growth as well. And uh, uh, San Francisco, of course, is on the coast of the Pacific Ocean. And this year, San Francisco will, will be a venue for APEC leaders meeting. Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Leaders Meeting. And President Joe Biden will host uh, this uh, APEC Leaders Meeting in November. And hopefully, uh, Prime Minister Kishida also will be coming to San Francisco. And China also is a member of APEC uh, Leaders Meeting. And uh, uh, Chinese President is always attending this APEC Leaders Meeting. So, uh, it, I think it's possible that uh, uh, Chinese president also will come to uh, San Francisco. So it's a very important opportunity for uh, APEC countries, Asia-Pacific countries, to get together and to discuss the uh, security issues and economic issues. So uh, now I would like to uh, uh, show again another video for uh, Japanese uh, approach to uh, for the uh, maritime security. <laughs> Ensuring the stability of the ocean is a critically important issue, but not an easy one for any single ASEAN nation. Multilateral cooperation is crucial for protecting such a huge expanse of water. The Japan ASEAN Shiprider Cooperation Program has been developed to contribute to regional stability. It provides the opportunity for participants to build mutual understanding and a professional network related to maritime security. safety is the shared goal and is the foundation of peace and prosperity in the region. It has been good, not only for technical training, but also the exchange of ideas with other ASEAN officers, which had expanded my vision. When I go back to my country, it will be my responsibility to share what I have learned about international maritime law. Maritime order cannot
cannot be maintained single-handedly. We need collaboration from all member states and members in the region. Currently from the Japanese Coast Guard, uh, we are learning new techniques and tactics from here uh, so we can ensure the safety and maritime security to our sea. The smuggling I and mean, illegal activities, whether there's a crime on sea or on land, it has negative effects on the law at sea. So if maritime law is not enforced in the region, it's the local communities that suffer. What the Japanese bring to the table is experience, new technologies, new ideas of thinking. It's important to get them involved in this training, to get everybody speaking the same language when it comes to maritime law enforcement. So, uh, finally, uh, also I would like to show the video uh, uh, what uh, Japanese government is cooperating with other ASEAN countries. The world and provided us with many blessings. While there are concerns in the international community about attempts to unilaterally change the status quo at sea, Japan has been providing seamless support, combining ODA, defense equipment cooperation, and capacity building to help improve sea protection capabilities, while calling for strict adherence to the principles of the rule of law. The Philippines, standing on the front line. Japan has been giving advice for a peaceful settlement to unlawful actions without use of force based on international law. If they will agree to those principles that uh, your government is trying to pursue, then uh, I'm very sure uh, there will be no conflict between uh, neighboring countries in the region. Indonesia, positioned at a pivotal point of maritime transportation. Japan has provided Indonesia with three patrol vessels to support its fight against piracy. Apa mengibahkan kapal Anis Madu, Hayabusa, dan Taka sangat membantu untuk perairan pengamanan Selat Malaka. Japan has conducted joint exercises with Vietnam to improve their maritime law enforcement capabilities and has agreed on comprehensive cooperation in maritime security for the first time with a Southeast Asian country. Japan will continue to cooperate with the international community to ensure open and stable seas. So time is up, so thank you very much for this time, and uh, I would like to enjoy the discussion. Thank you. Yasushi Naguchi, it's a pleasure to have you in our uh, Yacht Club. Um, so our two countries share many cultural values. Uh, those are exemplified lately on the baseball field. Talk to us a little bit. Talk to us a little bit about the pride you must feel with Otani being compared to the great Babe Ruth. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, your point. It's important. Uh, Japan imported baseball from U.S. to Japan many years ago, and uh, uh, I think baseball is still uh, the number one popular sport in Japan, and through baseball, uh, we learned a lot, uh, American culture, uh, and uh, so baseball really, really <coughs> connected uh, Japan and the United States, and uh, in the 90s, uh, prob probably you might remember Hideo Nomo, tornado yes. pitcher, yes, uh, playing in Los Angeles Dodgers, yes, and early 2000, Ichiro, Seattle Mariners, so he's a, he was a good hitter, and uh, and again now uh, Shohei Otani is uh, uh, second Babe Ruth, and uh, we are very happy that we have Shohei Otani in the West Coast. Uh, my personal uh, hope is that 
he will come to San Francisco. <laughs> but I'm not so sure. We, 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 who else would support that move? <laughs> we, 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 we are completely aligned on this goal. <laughs> uh -huh. So, but anyway, uh, actually, uh, he's playing in Los Angeles, and uh, he attracts so many Japanese tourists to California. So uh, he, I am very happy that he's pay, playing very well, and uh, he, he, uh, he at attracts so many people, not only Japanese people, American people, and uh, I hope he will continue to be is successful. Thank you. And one of the things about sports is it exemplifies the value of the rule of law. What would it be like if a team that lost uh, said they didn't win or said they won and so on. Uh, and we see Russia constantly inventing news and basically not owning up to the truth. That was especially clear in the Olympics from which they're currently banned because of their state-sponsored cheating. Mm -hmm. So uh, always uh, uh, rule of law, uh, we should respect rule of law and not only sports but also international politics, and uh, that's why I explained free and open the Pacific. Uh, in this vision, uh, we would like to spread the importance of rule of law, and that's why I mentioned case in Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine case is not only European security issue, but a global issue. So actually, uh, Prime Minister Kishida, uh, visited Lithuania this year in June, in order to or, or, or July, uh, in order to attend a NATO leaders meeting. So uh, Japan, uh, Korea, and New Zealand and Australia were invited to this NATO uh, leaders meeting. We are not member of NATO, but uh, this demonstrates the Japanese keen interest in the European security issues. Okay. So San Francisco has evolved in the last 60 years uh, since World War II from Navy Town. We had destroyers and battleships, aircraft carriers in our harbor all the time during the 40s and even early 50s to Fleet Week, where we ceremonially celebrate our um, defense posture, essentially. And yet, we are the closest big city in America to uh, Japan and to the whole Pacific Basin. So we in San Francisco are paying more and more attention to the fact that we no longer have uh, repair yards in Mare Island, in Alameda. And uh, you guys count on us to be really strong, important defense partners. And um, we really appreciate your value because you're on the front line. North Korea, Russia, China, holy cow, you're, they're, on your, they're on your front doorstep. What's the distance between uh, North Korea and Tokyo? North Korea and Tokyo, oh, I think uh, um, 1.5 thousand kilometers or 2,000 kilometers. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are faced with... Uh, North Korean uh, missile challenges, right? And they continue to launch missiles, sophisticating their capabilities. Yes. And uh, uh, we have United Nations Security Council resolution to impose sanctions on North Korea. Uh, but in spite of that, uh, unfortunately, North Korea has been developing further and further. So uh, we need more and more. Uh, closer uh, military uh, defense uh, cooperation between U.S. and Japan and with other countries as well. Is, is China deliberately using North Korea as a buffer state and a proxy to basically unsettle the West? Well, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, actually, uh, China is a permanent Security Council member together with Russia. Mm -hmm. So, we hope uh, China uh, respects the uh, United Nations Security Council resolution and to join the sanctions. And uh, we hope China will be uh, behaving in a responsible manner. 
So uh, Hong Kong made an agreement with China uh, 20 something years ago for uh, the conversion of Hong Kong. How, what's the lesson we can learn from China, China's attitude about Hong Kong? Mm -hmm. So uh, it is unfortunate that uh, uh, China uh, did not comply with the agreement with United Kingdom when uh, United Kingdom returned Hong Kong to China. And uh, we are uh, concerned about the situation in Hong Kong and uh, uh, we, together with other countries, G7 countries, United States or European countries, we are raising policies that uh, we are uh, keeping close eyes on humanitarian situations in Hong Kong or Xinjiang or uh, in, in China. Taiwan. Taiwan is another case in point where we hear lots of Chinese saber rattling and yet we know that China's economic power comes mostly from exports. So is starting a scuffle in the South China Sea could cut off the pipeline to their economic power. So how concerned should we be about China's stance on Taiwan? Mm -hmm. So uh, Taiwan is very close to Japan geographically. Uh, it is just 110 kilometers from Taiwan to the uh, most western part of Japan. So any emergency could or might affect the Japanese national security. So we are keeping close eyes on what's happening in Taiwan, in the Strait of Taiwan. Uh, Taiwan is a very important partner for Japan, very important friend for Japan. So uh, we sincerely hope that uh, this issue of Taiwan Strait will be solved in a peaceful manner and uh, uh, through dialogues. And uh, uh, we are always against the uh, uh, unilateral attempt to change the status quo by force. So a uh, peaceful solution is uh, that what we, we hope. Yeah. How does Japan feel about the Chinese island building in the South China Sea? Yeah, so uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, Chinese uh, claim is that uh, the South China Sea is a traditional Chinese territorial waters, but uh, this is totally, uh, 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 this is this is this not match uh, uh, the with uh, international uh, uh, laws, and uh, we have a, a United Nations Convention on law, uh, law of the seas. And uh, uh, our territorial, usually uh, territorial waters should be limited uh, by uh, 12 uh, nautical miles. And this is the international rule. And international rule should be respected. And Chinese argument was, was rejected by the International Arbitration Tribunal ruling between China and Philippines. So uh, China should stop the militarization control of the, those disputed features in uh, South China Sea. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Chinese uh, government uh, uh, sit on the table for the negotiations. Yeah. In 2013, China initiated what they call the Chinese Belt and Road initiative across the world, around the world. They now have 130 countries that they've made investments in. What should be the American and what should be the Japanese response to China's uh, Belt and Road policy? Mm -hmm. So uh, we know that uh, China is providing assistance uh, to developing countries. And sometimes uh, those countries uh, have huge debt with China and uh, it, it uh, affects negatively the, uh, those countries' economy. And so uh, we always uh, ask China to have a sustainable uh, foreign assistance. And uh, uh, also uh, uh, Japan is advocating uh, improvement of infrastructure quality. So, 
we need uh, uh, inf infrastructure resilient and uh, useful for the local people. So uh, we are advocating that. So Japan is a very important partner to America. And with a population of 123 million, such as you have, basically a third of America, and a GDP of four trillion, um, you know, we count on you to be super strong and we love your economic growth. However, you do have an aging population. What can you do about your aging population? Yeah. Our dear friends, we have to yeah. ask. So, um, uh, yeah, so I have to uh, correct that uh, uh, you mentioned initially uh, uh, US, China, Germany, Japan. Right? Yeah, yeah. But Japan is the third largest, and uh, Germany is the fourth largest. And California is almost approaching Germany. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so California and Japan do like each other, <laughs> and we and we. It's wonderful to see your economic growth, and we also have an aging problem here in yeah. California. So, uh, what are you guys going to do about the aging population in in our friend Japan? Yeah. So, uh, you made a very important point. Uh, I would say that Japan is faced with two biggest challenges. One is the security challenge. Another is population decreasing, aging society. We have uh, almost 30% of the population is uh, more than 65 years old. And we have more than 70,000 elder people who are more than 100 years old. And uh, we have uh, less and less children. Uh, per family, 1.3 children. And so uh, this is the biggest issue for Japan. And uh, it's not so easy to overcome these challenges, but Prime Minister Kishida announced a uh, new economic policy. And one of his focus is to, to encourage uh, big companies to be more innovative. For example, taking advantage of the technology in Silicon Valley for, for example, uh, now, as you might know, Toyota is, has a partnership with Joby Aviation and developing uh, a flying vehicle. Honda is, uh, ha has a partnership with Cruise, GM Cruise, for unmanned vehicle. Hmm. So, uh, so in this way, uh, Japanese companies are more and more innovative, taking advantage of the new technologies of Silicon Valley. And also, we are supporting uh, Japanese startups uh, being developed more and more. And the government has a very big project of uh, dispatching young university students or young entrepreneurs to be dispatched to Silicon Valley or to Boston or to Israel uh, to learn about uh, startup companies, uh, ecosystem of Silicon Valley, how these startups uh, developing. So uh, startups and uh, innovation uh, keywords for Japanese com uh, uh, companies or Japanese economy to, to develop uh, uh, more. So uh, how to overcome this challenge of population decreasing society uh, is, a, is a, one of the most important uh, issue for, for Japan. You also have the longevity record. Uh, your nation uh, keeps its citizens <laughs> healthy for an awful long time. The average age of uh, Japanese males is even more th older than the average, I'm mean, not the average age, the, uh, the average age of uh, when they die, 80, and it's even uh, older than women. But your average age of the whole population is, is um, what is it, 49. In America, it's 39. So you have an aging population, but you're taking care of them. You're Somehow you're keeping them alive for a lot longer than we are in America. So congratulations again on that. <laughs> now, I hear you saying that you are also uh, attracted to the business initiatives, especially in California, of entrepreneurship. Are you more interested in uh, stock options now than you might have been in the past? You know, Kuritsus were not known for having stock options. Uh, well, so uh, in this respect, I don't know a lot about this issue. So, uh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so um, Australia as a partner. Talk to us about the value of uh, your neighbor Australia to the south mm -hmm. as a partner. 
So uh, Australia, well, we share the common values with Australia, and uh, uh, we have very close relations with Australia in the security and uh, economy. Uh, Australia, we import a lot of gas, natural gas from Australia. So uh, very important energy security uh, supply for Japan. And uh, I would say that the uh, well, U.S. is the uh, uh, most important ally for Japan. But uh, next to U.S., uh, talking about security issues, Australia is number two. So uh, because they have uh, very strong armed forces, we have several agreements to facilitate the Australian armed forces to operate in Japan or near Japan. And uh, so US, Australia, and then UK probably. So uh, those countries uh, support uh, to Japan is very important. And uh, this free and open in the Pacific is not uh, accomplished only by Japan. So uh, we need cooperation of other countries, like-minded countries, allied countries, like US, Australia, UK, European countries, or Southeast Asian countries. Now, I'm going to keep asking questions, but if you have one, raise your hand, and Walter will bring the mic to you. We'd welcome. Here's a question here, Walter. Fritz Maytag has a question. Fritz, are you going to ask the question in English or in Japanese? <laughs> yeah, English. <laughs> Just curious, hearing you thinking about uh, the past, uh, and especially the San Francisco Japan relationship. After the war, the occupation of Japan had a tremendous effect on Japanese culture. Very few Americans, I think, understand how much change was caused by the occupation. Land reform business uh, reform. I wonder what, um, what to, in Japan today young people think about the occupation. Was it, are there good things about it? Are there, were there mistakes made? And mm -hmm. Any comments would be very interesting. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't know exactly what uh, young people are thinking, but uh, definitely uh, because of, uh, or thanks to the United States, after the World War II, uh, Japan was able to be a democratic country, and democratic and stable country, and uh, uh, not only politically speaking, but also economically speaking, uh, we are benefited a lot through business or through trade with the United States. And now Silicon Valley is more and more important for Japan uh, to learn about. Uh, the ecosystem of Silicon Valley. So uh, I think uh, many Japanese uh, uh, people uh, understand that uh, Japanese behavior World War II or before World War II was wrong and uh, uh, now we are able to become democratic countries and uh, uh, I think many people uh, consider positively the, uh, the, the United States engagement after the World War II. Did I see another question over here? Okay, one in the back of the room. Yeah, Lance has a question. Hi, uh, Noguchi-san. Thank you very much for your presentation today. Uh, before I ask my question, I want to point out that for the San Francisco Giants, we had Shinjo playing center field, and he was fantastic. <laughs> he played with Wa. Uh, my question, though, is about the map that we see behind you or ahead of you. Um, one of the uh, energy dependencies of Japan is oil from the Middle East, and it flows right through this little gap here between Malaysia and Indonesia through the Straits of Malacca. And it seems like a place that would be uh, Japan must be very careful about to maintain open because all of those ships then flow through the South China Sea. So can you speak some about any of the challenges that Japan has in working with Malaysia and with Indonesia to maintain free and open shipping and traffic through that area? Okay. 
thank you very much for your question. And uh, good question, Lance. Yeah. I think well, uh, I don't know exactly now, but uh, at least until several years ago, uh, the piracy was a very serious issue for not only for Malacca Strait, but also uh, off the coast of Aden, off the coast of Djibouti. And uh, so Japan is cooperating for counter piracy operation, and particularly in uh, off the coast of Djibouti, off the coast of Aden. And, and also uh, we are providing assistance to maintain this uh, free and open uh, Malacca Strait. Uh, actually, when I was uh, working in the Defense Ministry, I visited Djibouti uh, because Japanese self defense force has a, has a yeah, uh, logistic hub uh, in Djibouti in order to support Japanese uh, maritime self defense force ship uh, to be engaged in the counter piracy operation and uh, which has a huge impact for containing the piracy in Middle East or of the coast of Aden. So uh, actually you are very right that uh, those uh, maritime route, uh, sea lane, how to maintain uh, open and free and open sea lane is a uh, vital interest for Japan. Uh, so uh, recently, our Prime Minister visited Middle East countries such as Saudi Arabia, UAE, and Qatar. And uh, uh, so, well, uh, in order to keep this ceiling, uh, Japan uh, is ready to continue to work very hard. Thank you. Talk to us about the recent changes in the Japanese security policies. Uh, okay, so, uh, so well, uh, I, I can repeat that uh, uh, last year uh, we announced a new uh, national security strategy and uh, we, we uh, announced the, uh, to increase the defense spending uh, up to 2% GDP target uh, by fiscal year 2027 and also uh, we we, we we uh, decided to uh, 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 increase our deterrence capability, particularly uh, counter-strike capability and uh, uh, purch purchasing tomahawks. So uh, these are very important change or, 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 or transformation of Japanese defense and uh, security policy. And uh, based on this new uh, strategy, uh, we are steadily uh, developing our uh, defense capability. Talk about American military bases in Japan. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, I understand that there are uh, more than uh, 50,000 uh, 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 US forces uh, 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 personnel in, in Japan, which is a, a, a very important role in order to keep and maintain the uh, stability of, of Indo-Pacific and uh, this uh, presence of United States uh, armed forces in Japan is is uh, critical uh, for the uh, security situations in this uh, region. So uh, we are ready to continue to cooperate with the United States and uh, how to uh, improve our uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, operation joint operations between Japan and the United States, and uh, uh, so uh, we are working very hard in order to enhance our uh, security alliance. Well, Yasushi Naguchi, thank you very much for sharing your point of view and your insights um, with the Wednesday Yachting Luncheon. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Yes. yes. Good. With that, we adjourn the meeting. Thank you very much. Good. 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 Thank you so much. So interesting. Very good.
This has been a presentation of the Wednesday Yachting Luncheon.